Okay, thank you very much. Um, and welcome to SOMAS. Uh, I, I have a main message and the main message is we want you to come to Stony Brook and we want you to study in SOMAS. And I'm just gonna review some of the reasons that, that I think this could be the place for you. So, so uh, SOMAS in Stony Brook is a fantastic place to study, to learn, to discover, and to make lifelong friends. Um, we want to have the opportunity to work with you because you are the future of our country. Um, and so we want to do a good job in giving you a great experience and to get you on a path to success and a rewarding and enjoyable career. SOMAS is very broad, encompassing marine atmospheric sciences and sustainability studies. Those are the three divisions in, in SOMAS, and there are degree options in each of those. But it's important that we are all united in SOMAS in our desire to help define sustainable, um, healthy pathways for interaction of human systems with the natural part of the planet. In other words, we want to help you save the world from ourselves. We have fantastic facilities that can help you probe the atmosphere uh, and the oceans and human systems interacting with those, like our state of the science radar meteorology facilities, our research vessel, the Seawolf, our airplanes. We have labs on Long Island Sound and in uh, Southampton. And we provide opportunities for internships and study abroad opportunities in places like Jamaica, Tanzania, Kenya, and, uh, and places as exotic as Ireland. Our students uh, have no problem finding great jobs. They do get great jobs and they're happy. They're often in the greater New York uh, region, but around the country. And we know because we work with them after they graduate, they become colleagues in every way, except they make more money than we do. Um, we're working on the design of new campus-wide degree programs that will do things that no other schools can do, engaging you in things like solutions to the climate change uh, grand challenge that connect you to prospective employers and give you real world experiences in problem solving. So we're working hard to make Stony Brook a totally unique experience for you. And uh, if you come, we will prove it to you. And, and lastly, this is a great place to live. Long Island is a fantastic uh, physical and natural and un sometimes unnatural environment. There's a lot to do here. Everybody likes living here, and we would just love to have the opportunity to work with you and learn with you. Uh, so come to Stony Brook, and uh, we'll start the process. Thanks for uh, being here today. And I am going to turn it over to Professor Michael French. Michael French is an associate professor in atmospheric sciences, and um, he studies severe storms, in part making use of our advanced uh, radar meteorology, meteorology uh, infrastructure. So Michael, take it away. Thanks so much, Shep. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for being here. As Shep said, my name is Michael French, and I work on the atmospheric science side uh, at SOMAS. So I just want to take a few minutes and, and talk about um, that program. And I really want to, what I really want to emphasize here is the flexibility of the program. There's a lot of different career paths that meteorologists take uh, in the job market. And our program is designed so that whichever one that looks best to you, you'll be ready for. Um, I think this is important um, because I experienced something like this. As, as an undergraduate, I thought I wanted to be a broadcast meteorologist on TV. And by the time I was a sophomore, I realized that was not happening. Um, I didn't, I realized that wasn't my personality. And then I also wasn't the greatest or best forecaster. So I ended up going into research and I was very lucky that the program I was in allowed me to, to 
uh, have a background that, that I could still excel. And so I think that's how our program is, is designed as well. Um, next slide. So you can see a list of courses here. Uh, we have about a dozen faculty on the atmospheric science side and everyone, uh, uh, each person has a different specialty. And so that means that even though meteorology covers a, uh, a broad array of topics, we have someone here who basically specializes in them. And that could be um, radar, that could be dynamics, that could be hurricanes or climate or climate change or storms. Um, we have someone here who specializes in that. The other thing I wanted to point out at the bottom there, you see we were one of the first programs in the country to have a five-year combined bachelor's and master's program. Um, so especially uh, if you're doing uh, very well academically, entering your junior year, you can apply to be part of our five-year program. And then in your senior year, you finish your bachelor's, but also start your master's and you can finish your master's in five years instead of uh, taking four years to get a bachelor's degree and then two or three years to get a master's degree. And so if that's something that you're interested in, an advanced degree, we have that five-year option, which uh, as I mentioned, I think we were one of the, one of the first to have that. So uh, we've already had some students successfully pass through that program. The next slide. As Shep mentioned, we have a number of facilities. Um, so here is uh, an example of our weather station that's up on the health sciences roof, um, making measurements and providing us with video. I think I actually saw a video of this on News 12 the other day. Some of the, uh, the very interesting storms and tornadoes we had passed through uh, the Long Island area. Uh, next slide. What I wanted to point out here is a, is a few things. Um, number one, if you look in the top right, if you, for example, have an interest in broadcast meteorology, we have a, um, a good collaborative effort with the journalism school that allows our undergraduate students, if that's the career path that they want, to start get experience um, using a green screen and getting themselves ready for a potential career in broadcast meteorology. And that's uh, really huge if that's the area that you want to go into, that you have some experience at the undergrad level, um, getting feedback and making tapes to send off to news stations, uh, wherever you might start in your career. Uh, if you're interested in research, uh, you see this in the center, some students lifting off a weather balloon. Uh, if we go to the next slide, um, you can see our radar facility that Shep mentioned. We have a number of radars, um, including our own mobile uh, radar that's mounted on a truck called Skylar that we use in research. And we have a number of field projects going on. So for example, this January, we'll once again be probing winter storms locally using these radars and weather balloons. And we want undergraduates to help with that research, to get that experience. So we have had for a, a couple of years now, students helping collect radar data, helping launch weather balloons into winter storms. Um, and Jan this upcoming spring, I'll be taking one of our radars down to the Southeast US to, to study severe storms and tornadoes again. And so we like to get not just graduate students, but also undergraduate students that research experience. Uh, next slide. So um, just a, a few more thoughts on research. As I mentioned, we have um, faculty that cover all of these areas. So if you want undergraduate research experience, it's not, you, you can get your own experience actually working on research, not just collecting data. We, we like to emphasize both. So whether you're interested in, in, in running a climate model or looking at hurricanes or storms or uh, winter storms or large scale dynamics, um, if you're interested in undergraduate research, we have a lot of those opportunities because of the breadth of topics that our faculty are able to, to, to cover. As far as internships, we really, uh, it works out well being so close to New York City. So a lot of private companies have their offices uh, in, in the metro area. Um, forecasting is, is a huge part of, of uh, not just uh, the government sector, but also the private sector. So a lot of those, those, those companies are located there in New York City. We have the National Weather Service office about 30 miles to our east in Upton. Uh, News 12, other uh, broadcast stations, obviously in the New York City area are, are also here locally. So there's a lot of opportunities for internships um, if you uh, come to, to Stony Brook and major in, in atmospheric science. Um, next slide. And then finally jobs. And so as I mentioned, there's a lot of 
different areas that uh, students can go into. A lot of it is forecasting, both for the government or for private companies. Um, there's forecast, weather affects everything, right? Um, agriculture, energy is a big one. So there's a lot of private companies now that, that are focused on forecasting for many different reasons. Or you can, we, you know, our program is set up so that if you wanna to go to graduate school and excel in research or become an academic, uh, if that's your career path, um, our program will set you up as well for that given uh, the, the number of classes we now offer and the background of our faculty. So if you're interested in, a, in, a, in majoring in atmospheric science, we'd love to have you in our program and, and please reach out and contact me if, you, if you'd like any more information. And uh, with that, uh, I'd be happy to turn it over to Sharon and Donovan. They are gonna talk to you about our sustainability studies program. Karen, I think that's you. Hi, you guys. Nice to meet you. Um, I can only see Donovan on the screen, but uh, welcome to uh, Sustainability Studies. We actually have a number of uh, majors that you might be interested in. The first one that we have up here is the Coastal Environmental Studies major. And with the Coast major, it leads to a Bachelor's of Science degree. And it has a strong foundation in environmental science. And the coursework has a lot of uh, STEM courses, biology, chemistry, geosciences, math, physics, marine sciences. And it also includes policy and communications. So uh, students with a coast major end up being prepared for um, um, jobs in environmental science or environmental managing positions in the field or the lab graduate school or law degrees. I am actually the major of the next, I'm actually the um, faculty director for the next major listed up there, the Ecosystems and Human Impact major. So the EHI major is um, uh, close, it's a mixture of environmental science and biology. It has, uh, we are interested in the way that human activity interacts with the environment. And the core classes give you skills like um, GIS and coding. And the theoretical coursework that goes with it focuses on population management and remediation. So if you are interested in biology in a way that um, um, in applied biology, then this might be a good major for you. Um, my students end up going into, um, depending on their interests, they end up working for the DEC, for the Park Service. They end up going into graduate school for conservation. I actually get a lot of um, pre-med and, uh, <laughs> um, pre-med and, um, um, pre-vet students too. I don't know what we're, what are we, uh, okay, so I don't, I don't know what we're doing with the slides. Um, anyway, some of the classes, some of the fun classes that you can take in sustainability studies include uh, sustainability of the Long Island Pine Barrens. This is a class that's offered over the summer and we co-teach it with a bunch of um, with a number of faculty in sustainability so that you can learn about the Long Island Pine Barrens from a um, um, geology perspective, economics, ecology, or environmental humanities. Um, I frequently teach that with an environmental humanities professors or um, an ecology professor. The uh, other fun classes that we have on here are conservation genetics. And that is a, a management class for how you, to best conserve populations that you care about, either because they're invasive or because they're rare. I also teach this ecological and social dimensions of disease course. If you are interested in public health or epidemiology, either to save the bats or to save the people, that's a really good cl class for you. Um, and there are, I don't wanna go down each of these, but I just wanna to want to, um, as you look at this list, these classes are fun. These classes are project-based. 
You're not just sitting in a classroom listening to professors drone on and on, kind of like what you're doing here. Um, all of the classes that I teach and many of the other classes that you see on this list, you are working with your classmates to actually do something. With the Long Island Pine Barrens, we actually go out to the forest with the um, um, ecological and social dimension um, of diseases. We are going out there and um, right now we're surveying all the anti-vaxxers and we're trying to figure out what's driving them. Um, could I have the next slide, please? So um, actually my favorite course series that I teach is this Earthworm Ecotoxicology Research Lab. Once you have any lab class under your belt, you can take SUS 350 or 351, no, SUS 351 or 352. And in this class, you will work with your peers to come up with a hypothesis that you want to test. You will come up with um, an experimental design. You will collect data. You will anal analyze data. And you will communicate that. Through this course series, I have published, let me rephrase that. Through this course series, more than 50 undergraduate students have published their work in peer review literature, including pretty high impact uh, journals like Chemosphere and Applied Soil Ecology. We call this class course series the Worm Lab, but um, we also torture cockroaches and soybean plants and soil microbes. So if you're interested in the impact of plastics or Roundup or cadmium on creatures that live in or on the soil, and you're interested in learning by doing rather than sitting in a classroom listening to lectures, I highly recommend this class. Go ahead, the next slide, please. Um, I'm not the only one who teaches classes um, that are that badass. Uh, this is um, ENV321, which is Chemistry for Environmental Science Scientists. And um, this is a course that's part of the um, COAST major. And if you are interested in um, um, sort of environmental science with a chemistry angle, I highly recommend that you check out the COAST major. It also has many project-based courses. Could I have the next slide, please? Um, uh, actually, I'm going to hand, I think I'm handing the slides over to Donovan, but I want to give a shout out to one more major here. And um, if you are listening to this and you're like, I don't know, it's a lot of science, man. I love the environment, but I really like videos and books and communicating and, and getting people involved um, in science rather than um, doing it then maybe the environmental humanities major is for you. Um, that leads to a bachelor's of arts, arts and it draws together a range of disciplines to explore human understanding and interpretation of nature. So the curriculum integrates disciplines from the social sciences and the humanities, and it includes writing, literature, philosophy, history, anthropology, archeology, span and um, classes like that. So the, uh, Director of that particular major also teaches project-based classes, and he's really interested in getting students making video. And um, um, uh, right now he's got a group of serv people surveying um, opinions about the Hudson, and he's building, a, I think, a video about that. Okay, Donovan, I'm handing that over to you. Thanks, Sharon. Uh, Amanda, uh, Amanda, could you go back a couple of slides? Sorry. Thank you. Okay, so uh, I'm going to talk briefly about um, a couple more of our sort of non-STEM majors in sustainability studies. We have a, a Bachelor of Arts in Sustainability Studies, uh, which maybe can sometimes be a little bit confusing. Um, I asked the director to describe it for me because she can do a better job, and she said uh, the Sustainability Studies major prepares students to understand and address environmental, social, political, economic, and ethical issues related to the transformation of societies into more sustainable societies. Uh, the curriculum integrates principles and methods from social sciences, natural sciences, and humanities. And I would say it has a particular emphasis on topics like resource economics, full cost accounting, and sustainability management. Uh, this degree helps prepare students for employment in graduate school in public and private nonprofit sectors in uh, areas like economic development, foreign aid, public administration, law, diplomacy, public policy, public health, business, finance, uh, et cetera. 
And um, I think um, for those of you who are interested in the sort of economic aspects of sustainability, how do we account for the negative externalities of all the things that we're doing to the planet um, while we try to build things and grow things and, and those sorts of things, move, move things around? Uh, that's, a, that's a good major for you. And uh, finally, the major I direct, EDP, Environmental Design Policy and Planning. Uh, that degree, we help students understand how the built environment is shaped by public and private action. So we study cities, towns, villages, regions. Uh, we understand or we try to help students understand how urban planners and others balance goals like environmental sustainability, resilience, livability, economic vitality and livability and all those things. Uh, to make more livable and sustainable communities. And my students go on, our students go on to prepare, uh, go on to study a variety of fields in graduate school and also some go directly into the workforce. Uh, fields like urban design, city planning, landscape architecture, but also real estate development, economic development, uh, resource conservation, law, uh, and other areas as well. Uh, and lastly, I wanted to mention um, uh, all of those degrees have a minor. Uh, so, and, and you could, you could major in a degree from another department and you could minor in one of our degrees. You could also major in any of our degrees and minor in a different one if you were so interested. Uh, we also have one program that is just a minor that is geospatial science. And geospatial science is a, a flexible undergraduate minor allowing students to apply tools of geospatial analysis to pretty much any other field that they're studying from any of our programs to public health, uh, geology, sociology, history, you name it, business, um, and basically learn uh, a set of tools, uh, mostly known as GIS, Geographic Information Systems, uh, to help uh, for research uh, and planning in a variety of, uh, of fields. And uh, you can learn more about that by talking to Dr. Zhang, who could not make it today. Um, next slide, please. Actually, you can, sorry, Mandy, you can go a couple forward. So I just wanted to mention uh, and uh, reiterate something Sharon said, all of, not all, but many, many, sorry, can you go back one, Amanda? Uh, many of our project, many of our courses are project-based, even classes that are nominally lecture courses. I have my students um, working in groups. I have them working on projects. I have them going out around campus and collecting information, observing how people are using the built environment, et cetera. Um, we have debates in class. We, you know, we develop case studies. Uh, this is one of my courses, which is a, a wholly project-based course called, uh, it's a culminating course for our major. This is from a couple of years ago, where we worked with the two folks on the left side there work in the campus facilities division, and we worked with them on uh, on some plans to to imagine how we might redevelop uh, a section of, uh, of campus uh, near the chemistry building. And I can say that of the folks in that photo there, uh, a number of them are now in or just about ready to finish graduate school in a variety of areas. A couple others are working. Um, a couple others I've lost touch with, of course, that happens. But um, you know, we really try to train students to be able to jump right into um, a graduate, you know, fairly high level graduate schools and uh, and the workforce. Uh, you can go on to the next one, Amanda. Uh, our students get internships all over the place, and we'd really try to help them with that. We have a career center on campus, but we also try to do our own work helping connect students, uh, especially with alumni. In the last two weeks, I've had six alumni make Zoom visits to my courses, and some of them are working, some of them are in graduate school, uh, talking to students about what they're doing and how they got there. Uh, and many of those connections can lead to internships. We also have uh, a number of other uh, ways that we try to connect students with internships, which we think are really valuable for our undergraduates. Next slide. Uh, our students go out into the workforce, sometimes graduate school first, sometimes directly, and you can see some of the kind of work they do here. Um, you know, it's been great catching up with a bunch of my former students uh, in the last few weeks. Some of them are now moving, you know, have been out long enough, they're starting to move into senior positions. In fact, uh, the person there that says New York City Department of Transportation Project Manager, she's now the Chief of Staff to the, uh, to the Commissioner. So um, our students, you know, they don't only get jobs, they keep those jobs and they, and, uh, and they get better jobs. Uh, next slide, please. And uh, our students also go on to excellent uh, graduate schools in the region, nationally, and even internationally. I just spoke to a student the other day who's uh, in graduate school for sustainability management in Amsterdam. So we really have, um, you know, I think we, we provide students with a great skill set uh, to go on and do a number of different things, uh, kind of all related to how human activity affects or is affected by uh, the natural world. 
and how we can do a better job of managing it. So I think I turn this over for Sharon for the last slide and then she'll pass it on after that. Or maybe not. I guess, I guess I'll turn it over to Laura. Okay, thank you, Donovan. Uh, good afternoon, my name is Laura Verman and I'm an associate professor at SOMAS and I'm here to introduce the Marine Sciences Division. This is the largest division at SOMAS and faculty come from many different sub areas of marine sciences, including ocean chemistry, uh, marine ecology, fisheries biology and ocean conservation. And the diversity in marine research fields that our faculty covers is also reflected in a variety of marine and environmental sciences classes we offer at the undergraduate level, as you'll see in a second. Um, we have three undergraduate programs. You can earn a Bachelor of Sciences in Marine Sciences, a Bachelor of Sciences in Marine Vertebrate Biology, and a Bachelor of Arts in Environmental Studies. And we also have a five-year accelerated program. Uh, next. And um, as mentioned, our faculty covers many different subdisciplines. So the marine environments we study is also very diverse diverse, um, ranging from the open ocean to coastal settings. And in fact, many of our profession, uh, professors study um, the environment right in front of our doorsteps. So uh, coastal areas around Long Island. Next. And um, this is just a brief list of all the courses or of some of the courses uh, we offer just to give you an idea of the breadth of education in marine and environmental studies you uh, get at Stony Brook. And as you can see, aside from the classical courses such as biological oceanography or chemical oceanography, we also have a course on marine mammals and aquaculture. And our environmental studies program includes courses such as environmental problem solving and prospects for planet Earth. Uh, next, we have wonderful facilities to carry out the research as well as to uh, facilities that we can use for our courses. Here on the upper left, you can see our Marine, Marine Science Center um, in Southampton. This 15 square foot building houses classrooms as well as lab space, and it includes a state of the art 2,500 uh, square foot seawater lab where research on harmful algal blooms, ocean acidification, and shellfish is carried out. And you'll probably hear more about those facilities from Kurt Bretsch in a second. On the right side, you'll see a picture of the RV Seawolf. This is the biggest of our research vessels. And this vessel is uh, used heavily by our faculty. It's about 80 feet long and it has lab spaces and can accommodate about 11 people. And we, for example, use it to study fish populations around Long Island. And finally, at the bottom, you see a picture of our Flex Pond Marine Laboratory, which has just undergone major renovations. And uh, th this lab is actually located on the North Shore, just a few minutes drive uh, from main campus where SOMAS is located. It houses several wet labs and seawater tables, and similar actually to the Southampton lab, a saltwater supply system. Um, it is actually used year round for studies, for example, also on ocean acidification and shellfish and as well as uh, many other marine organisms. And with that, I would actually like to introduce Dr. David Black, who will talk more about the marine sciences major. Thanks, Laura, and thanks to all of you for joining us today. Uh, the marine science major is one of the larger majors within SOMAS, and we also offer a minor in marine sciences, and we prepare our students to work on what are really some of the biggest challenges facing society today. Uh, that emphasizes kind of the human-ocean interaction, but we also work on just understanding the oceans themselves, as there's still a lot to learn there. We've actually spent more time on the surface of the moon than we have on the bottom of the sea. Our faculty and students, including undergraduates, work on uh, topics such as climate change, marine conservation, uh, evolution of coastlines, and how, the, uh, how human society interacts with the ocean along the coastline. As a matter of fact, that's really one of our emphases here at SOMAS as a whole, our, our human ocean interactions. Uh, we are really trying to prepare you to uh, take on whatever career path related to the oceans that you want as you go forward. Next slide, please. 
The marine science major is one of the more interdisciplinary majors that you'll find, period, not just at, at SOMAS, but, but anywhere. One of the things I really love about the oceans is how everything interacts with, with one another. Uh, the biology interacts with the physics and the chemistry and the geology, and the chemistry impacts uh, the, the biology and the physics, how the oceans circulate, and the geology impacts uh, the, the oceans and the chemistry and the geology. Then you have completely external things like, like astronomy impacting the oceans through tides. Uh, it, it's all tied together, and, and because of that, uh, we try to provide you with the foundation. Uh, we don't try, we do provide you with the foundation in those basic sciences. So we get you a, a good footing in biology and chemistry and physics, uh, and we're adding geology into the mix. We have faculty that represent all of the major areas of marine science. Uh, admittedly, we're uh, heavy on the biological oceanography side of things, but honestly, that's where a lot of the student interest is. But we also have physical oceanographers and chemical oceanographers and geolo geological oceanographers, which is what I do. Uh, I'm not one of our faculty that studies right right off our, our doorstep. I'm one of the faculty that who, uh, when we go, when I go out to sea, doesn't see uh, a coastline for weeks on end, thousands of miles out in the middle of nowhere. And we drag students along on that too. And for the most part, they enjoy it uh, when they're not getting seasick. Next slide, please. One of the most important things I, I think all of SOMAS offers, including the marine science major, are re research and internship opportunities. Many of our faculty labs host undergraduate students doing undergraduate research that is frequently presented at conferences. And I can't overstate the importance of that undergraduate research experience. You actually get to apply what you're learning in classes in a way uh, that there's really no other substitute for. And we have undergraduates working in all aspects of the marine sciences. Uh, in addition to undergraduate research, we have students doing internships uh, across a variety of institutions, both governmental and non-governmental. Uh, some of the examples are shown on this slide. We have students who have done internships at the National Park Service, the Long Island Aquarium, which is a uh, public commercial aquarium, but really has some amazing displays uh, and a host of actually kind of mini marine environments in which students can interact with. Uh, we have students who've done internships at the Moat Marine Lab and many, many more opportunities. Uh, we get our students out into the field as part of the research and internship opportunities, but also uh, if you're, the field is not for you and, and it is not always uh, for, for everyone. Some people want nothing to do with going out on boats or getting their hands slimy. Uh, there, there are lots of opportunities in the labs as well. Next slide, please. Uh, and, and then uh, what I'm going to cover last before turning it over to our next uh, speaker is that our major really prepares students to enter the job market and graduate school or, or graduate school, if that's what your plans might be. Uh, our graduate students are employed by federal, state, and local environmental agencies, so ranging from the uh, Environmental Protection Agency at the federal level to local department environmental and conservation agencies at, at a much smaller scale. We have students working in private environmental uh, consulting firms and a variety of nonprofit organizations, such as the Nature Conservancy. Uh, we have students working in aquaculture facilities professionally, uh, public aquariums. The director of the uh, State Aquarium of Georgia is a SOMAS alum. Uh, and we have students in graduate programs in marine science worldwide. Uh, on the whole, I, I think we really do a great job of giving you the experience you want as a marine science student and preparing you for the next stage. Uh, and with that, I'm going to turn it over to Joe Warren, who is the faculty director for the Marine Vertebrate Biology Maker. Thank you. Thanks, Dave. Hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us. I'm going to talk uh, briefly about our Marine Vertebrate Biology major. Um, this focuses more on the biology of a subset of the organisms that occur in the ocean. Uh, it provides students with a, a really solid background in basic biology. So sometimes people are concerned that focusing in this major uh, might limit them, but we make sure you take classes like chordate zoology, um, chemistry, physics, calculus, um, to make sure you've got the background you need to kind of continue in whatever direction you want. Uh, the major uh, has a lot of opportunities uh, between classes and research and internships um, on specific vertebrate organisms. And so that includes fishes, 
uh, sharks, birds, sea turtles, and marine mammals. Um, and again, we, we focus more on the organism aspect, although there are many of these classes talk about how these organisms ecology relates to the other aspects of, of oceanography. Uh, one of the key um, aspects or benefits of our program is the hands-on experiences. Um, Dr. Brech will talk more about some of the classes that you can take and how you can get uh, literally your hands on these organisms um, through either field-based courses, or I'm going to just highlight two local organizations that we have students do internships with, as well as sometimes they end up working for these groups. And that's the New York Marine Rescue Center and the Atlantic Marine Conservation uh, Society. And these are two nonprofit groups on Long Island that deal with stranded animals that occur on our beaches. Uh, so when a baleen whale, like a humpback whale, washes up on our shoreline, AMSES is the organization that, that deals with that. And so students who work with them literally have the opportunity to help figure out why that whale uh, may have passed away. Um, I, I work with them. Uh, I help cut up animals on shore. And I was, I was astounded because I went to my class after I did this one day and I was like, oh, how many people have participated in a necropsy of a marine mammal? And I'd say 70% of my class raised their hands because they've taken advantage of those experiences. Um, the New York Marine Rescue Center is in charge of uh, dealing with stranded pinnipeds, seals, as well as sea turtles. And uh, for anybody in the audience who's in New York, we are at the start of cold stun sea turtle. Uh, season. And so if you're walking on the North Shore beaches, you might find uh, a sea turtle um, that's kind of in a, a, a coma, uh, essentially. Uh, and so you should contact the New York Marine Rescue Center. And we have students through classes and internships who work with that organization and get a chance to rehabilitate um, those animals. So it's, it's a really unique aspect of our program. Um, and the last thing I'll mention is just the research opportunities with faculty. Um, I have, I think, three undergrads working in my lab this semester. One of them's working on uh, using passive acoustics to look at individual dolphins that are uh, going between some of the artificial reefs south of our coastline. I have another student who's going through passive acoustic data looking at fin whale and hump humpback whale calls. And then I have a student who's looking at mesopelagic fish, so angler fish, viper fish, dragon fish, lantern fish, uh, from some research trips that I've I've gone on. And I've also, just like Dr. Black said, taken undergrads to see with me. So um, we like having undergrads in our labs, and they really benefit us as much as the students. Um, with that, I'm going to turn it over to my colleague, Dr. Tara Ryder. Hi everyone, I'm actually going to go to the next slide on this one, if we can go ahead and go to that. Um, I'd like to say hello and talk a little bit about the environmental studies major. Now, the environmental studies major does lead to a Bachelor of Arts degree, and it is designed to help students with um, analytical as well as communicative skills, and it really addresses a broad background, which is what we see as necessary to help not only understand, but ultimately hopefully solve kind of the environmental issues of the day. So by default, environmental studies is an interdisciplinary field, which is looking at human interaction with the environment. And we are looking at the fact that it's not gonna just be technology or science or social and political decisions that are going to resolve these issues, that it's going to take a combination of factors. And so when you look at our classes, you're going to see that we're pulling from the social sciences, the humanities, as well as from the natural sciences and engineering. So um, our students in environmental studies will take STEM courses like chemistry and um, introduction to biological anthropology along with physics for environmental studies. At the same time, they're gonna look at um, it, you know, classes talking about government, talking about society. Um, they're gonna study what the environmental problems of the day are. And they're looking at basically the myriad of ways in which we as humans 
can mobilize to tackle the environmental challenges of today. And we're looking to come up with creative new solutions to what are ultimately older problems. And like the marine science majors, we do believe our students um, need to get kind of hands on experience, whether that is doing a research project, going out into the field, uh, working in a lab, and definitely doing internships. So that real life experience will help to shape where they go next after they graduate. So we have students that are doing not only internships, but um, where they're ending up in jobs that are in fields of public interest, of science and advocacy. They are studying environmental conservation, uh, law, journalism. They are in television documentaries. They're looking at ecotourism. Um, they're doing population studies. They're focused on issues like public health. And we have set up an online community um, to help our students find these kind of opportunities for internships, for graduate schools, for jobs. And we do offer a combined BA in environmental studies with an MA in marine conservation and policy. And all of our students take a similar set of core courses, but they also get to uh, choose a specific area of concentration, such as what you see up here, um, whether it's in conservation biology or marine science or ecology or environmental law, waste management, public policy. So you can see that combination of you know, STEM and social sciences and humanities that really make up the field of environmental studies. Uh, so with that, I believe I am introducing Dr. Kurt Bresch, who's going to talk a little bit more about Semester by the Sea. Great. Thank you, Dr. Ryder. So I am Dr. Kurt Bresch. I'm a lecturer within SOMAS, which means that I was hired to teach undergraduates. I don't have an active research program, but I do teach a lot of courses and interact with undergraduates on lots of levels, including the Semester by the Sea. Um, I'm the director of, for the Semester by the Sea. And on this first slide, I have a little description as well as a link to the website that describes exactly what the Semester by the Sea is and kind of elaborates on some of the, the points I'm going to make today. But the Semester by the Sea, just in a nutshell to, to give you uh, an introduction to this, this is an opportunity for Stony Brook students to really immerse themselves in marine science at the Southampton campus. So the Southampton campus is a Stony Brook campus but it's about an hour east of the main campus, which is Mid Island. So the Stony Brook campus is out on the east end. Um, it's just on the South Fork. You can see in the picture here in the bottom right, this is our Marine Science Center. And you can see a few of our vessels there. We have another vessel that's not pictured here. It's probably uh, taking students or researchers out into the, the water. So we are right on the water, as you can see here on Old Fork Pond, and we have access to Shinnecock Bay. We have access to Peconic Bay, which is between the two forks and access to the Atlantic Ocean. So we can step right on the vessels and explore all of these fantastic coastal uh, habitats that we have out here on the east end of Long Island. So when you think about the semester by the sea, uh, next slide, Amanda, please. Recognize that this is a program, again, a SOMAS program within Stony Brook that you don't need to apply to as a Stony Brook student. You just need to kind of plan for it. So you'll see here on this picture, um, I mentioned that Stony Brook University juniors and seniors participate in this program and all majors are welcome, but the program really is best suited for um, science majors. So the marine science students, the ENS students, the MVV students and some sustainability students will participate. Well, we'll get students from biology as well or engineering on occasion or some of the humanities taking our courses and participating in this semester by the sea. So again, as you think about this, I want to, I can't emphasize enough, you don't need to apply to this, you just you participate in this during your junior or senior year, and you make progress towards graduation in four years. It doesn't interrupt anything at all. Um, you're taking your Stony Brook courses at Southampton. So just real quickly, we also have post-baccalaureates that participate in this program. So sometimes students have graduated from college already, and they just want a little bit more experience in research and marine science courses. At the Stony Brook Southampton campus, we have three research faculty, which initially doesn't sound like a lot. We have um, many research faculty within SOMAS. I think it's at about 50 or so, 
Um, and three of those are at Southampton, but those three have the largest research labs within SOMAS. And what that means is that they have, a, they have just fleets of graduate students working with them and lots and lots of undergraduates that get plugged into their research labs as others have talked about already. So again, in terms of um, research experience, we have lots of opportunities for that at Southampton. The final block on this slide that you see just lists a few of our, the uh, institutions from which other visiting undergraduates have joined us. So if you have friends that are going somewhere else, except uh, that's not Stony Brook, let them know that they can come and join us for a semester or two or three in our Semester by the Sea program um, at Southampton. This just shows folks that have come from as far away as Hawaii, actually, to come to the east end of Long Island. Next slide, please. All right, on this slide, I just want to hit really quickly the courses that we offer down here uh, in the fall. And then the next one, I'll talk about those in the spring. So when we think about the fall at Southampton, this is our active field season. This means that students who participate um, in the fully immersive experience, so they're taking all of their classes at Southampton in the fall, perhaps they're living in the dorms, that's not required. We have a lot of commuters that also participate. But if they're really immersed at Southampton in the fall, they can expect to be in the field perhaps uh, three or four times a week in the fall. Um, well, the weather's pretty good here on Long Island right through October uh, traditionally. So we get students out in the water, literally in the water, um, on the water on our vessels and around the water with our, with our courses. And I've just listed um, all of our fall, fall courses here. The top three are core courses. So we recommend that if you want the fully immersive experience, you take these. And you'll see that the top three, you get a nice mix of a science course, Long Island Marine Habitats, and then two humanities courses that, ex um, that um, show students the fantastic maritime cultural sites that we have out here on the east end of Long Island. So for instance, we go to the Fire Island Lighthouse, we go to the Montauk Lighthouse, we do a kayak trip in the afternoon, pull the kayaks out on the beach, do a few mini lectures, have some seafood or chili on the beach, watch the sun go down, have a fire pit, Tara, Dr. Ryder tells some ghost stories, um, and also some formal lectures during that experience. Um, we take the ferry across Long Island Sound and go to the Mystic Seaport for a full day. So again, that course really immerses students in the cultural parts of our coastal environment. You'll see several other courses listed here and I won't go through all of them. Uh, some of them are required for the marine science major and other majors. Um, I just wanna jump down to the bottom really quickly because we're super excited within SOMAS to be able to offer a really solid scuba program now. So just in the last year, we now have a sequence of three courses. We offer introduction to scuba in the fall, spring and summer. And we also have a fall course called scientific diving. It's an upper level course that students can take. And the third course is the tropical marine ecology course, which Dr. Warren's gonna talk about in a little bit. But just be aware that, again, if you're interested in, in um, uh, getting certified in scuba and really using this important tool to answer some of our scientific questions, we offer lots of opportunities for that um, here at the uh, Semester by the Sea Experience. Amanda, next slide, please. And here we offer, or I, I have a list of our spring courses that we offer down here at Southampton. These are mostly lecture-based courses in the spring because it, again, it's not our active field season, uh, but some of the courses like biological oceanography, they do take students out into the field um, to sample uh, water primarily in Shinnecock Bay and elsewhere. Um, and then as Dr. Warren talked about, this spring program is especially appealing to our MVB majors. We have courses, the biology and conservation of sea turtles, marine mammal and sea turtle rehabilitation and field techniques in marine mammal science and marine conservation, which can really kind of satisfy um, um, the interest that a lot of our MVB students have. But again, this is open for all majors. All right, next slide, please. And I just wanted to leave you this in terms of the semester by the sea component of this presentation. This just shows us our students in action um, in the semester by the sea. And again, you can see kind of the diversity of habitats that we explore and the diversity of activities that students do in the semester by the sea. And I'll be happy to take questions at the end of the presentation, um, but for now, I want to turn it back to Dr. Ryder and Dr. Warren, who are gonna talk about our study abroad programs. So hi again, everyone. So one of the things that Stony Brook does offer, but specifically also within SOMAS is we have some fabulous study abroad programs. Um, and through Stony Brook in general, you can actually study in over a hundred countries, but we have SOMAS 
faculty led programs that are going to Tanzania, that are going to Ireland and England, that are going to Cuba and the Bahamas. And there's also Jamaica, but that's it's got its own slide. So we're going to let Dr. Warren talk about Jamaica. Um, but they get the chance to study these very diverse environments in very different ways. So I am the program director for the trips to Ireland and England. And over there, we talk not only about the history and the culture, but we're really looking at how environment has shaped those societies in the past. And, you know, the societies today, including looking at how they are dealing with um, environmental issues, whether it's a matter of energy, talking about solar versus, um, you know, the lack that they have of like coal and oil. We talk about issues related to water scarcity, as well as talking about the marine environment. So I would like to encourage students to, you know, really think about how can they push beyond our, not just our local waters, but really beyond the, the borders here in the US and see what is happening worldwide. And students get this opportunity. And one of the wonderful things that they get is also the chance to get scholarships that are specific to these programs. So the one of the things I would like to encourage students to understand is that, first of all, these programs will often help to fulfill requirements both, both for are SOMAS majors as well as requirements uh, simply needed for kind of your general education requirements. But it is also so much more than just checking off a box. The experiences you get studying abroad are something that will stick with you forevermore. Um, so I'm going to pass this off to Dr. Warren, who helps to lead the program to Jamaica. Thanks, Tara. Uh, yeah, so for the past uh, 14, 15 years, myself and Dr. Brad Peterson have taken between 15 and 23 undergraduates and occasionally a graduate student uh, to the Discovery Bay Marine Lab, which is on the northwest coast of uh, the island of Jamaica. We're there for just uh, about two weeks. And in that upper left picture, you can see the, the dock where the lab has boats in the dorms where students uh, stay and where we eat. So we, we leave the compound for a couple of side trips, uh, but the, the why we go there is you are literally 50 yards from being in the water and you can swim out to the reef crest. Um, you do not have to scuba dive as part of this course. Uh, you can see a, a ton of great stuff snorkeling. In fact, you the best things you'll see will be during the night snorkel where occasionally you'll find a sleeping sea turtle. Um, but if you are a certified scuba diver or you want to get certified, you can do that as part of the course. Um, it's, it's a fantastic course. It's the best teaching evaluations I have, and it's not because of me, it's because of the habitat. Um, but it's, it's a course. There's a, an exam. Uh, occasionally, we give you three lectures in a day. And uh, for prospective uh, college students, this may shock you, but you might have to be up by 6 a.m. Uh, to get on the boat to go dive before breakfast. Uh, so just mentally prepare yourself for that possibility. Um, but it's a great course. We, we've been um, hamstrung. We haven't been able to offer it because of the pandemic, uh, but uh, hopefully next, next January uh, we'll be back up and running and we're looking forward to having you join us. Um, and I'm not sure who's after me now. That would be me. Yeah. Thanks, Dr. Warren. Okay, we just have a couple more slides um, and we'll wrap up our presentation. So we just wanted to mention that, you know, beyond the scholarships and the financial aid that you can get through federal programs or through the university, there are several scholarships that SOMAS offers for undergraduates that allow you to uh, progress towards graduation and take advantage of many of these opportunities that we've been discussing, the research opportunities, the study abroad opportunities. So I have them listed here as well as a link. Um, and I encourage you to check out this website and read more about these scholarships and how you can apply those um, to your time with us uh, here at SOMAS. Next slide, please. And while you're at SOMAS and the university, uh, we have four student clubs. So again, you know, when you're at the university, it's mostly the academics you should be focusing on, um, but there's a lot of opportunities for uh, social interaction with other students, and that'll often merge with your academics as well. So listed here, we have or very active clubs that we have on campus. And this is another way to get kind of plugged into your career interests and to interact with peers who have similar interests. You'll 
meet with guest speakers, you'll go on trips, you get out in the water with the Marine Science Club, for example. Um, but we have a lot of very active clubs and we encourage you to participate in these clubs and make connections with other students. Okay, next slide, please. All right, so wrapping this up, why should you come here to SOMAS at Stony Brook? Well, we have a lot of great people, as the slide says, and you've met many of them uh, tonight within SOMAS. Um, listed here, we have the directors of several of our programs along with their emails. If you'd like to follow up, um, you can reach out to them. And on the next slide, I just have a few of the folks within uh, so much. So here's, I think, nearly all of our faculty and staff. And again, we are here to help you progress towards graduation and provide these fantastic courses and research opportunities and assist you with internships um, here at SOMAS uh, at Stony Brook. Next slide, please. So we hope you'll come join us um, as an undergraduate in our SOMAS family and that we will see you uh, soon and we will help you progress towards graduation. Next slide, please which we see here, this was last spring's, uh, some of our students who graduated last spring, very happy to be moving um, onto the next stage of their career. All right, next slide, please. And this is literally the end. This is a picture of Montauk, the end of Long Island, and this is the end of our presentation. Um, but again, we encourage you to ask some questions in the chat and we can address those through with our um, question and answer period, which we're sliding into right now. Thank you, Amanda. Thank you, everybody. That was great. Um, we had a couple of questions from earlier that were answered in the Q and A um, that we could maybe grab one or two just to address live. Um, one of them is: um, Could you talk a little bit more about how the atmospheric sciences degree um, incorporates a focus on meteorology, uh, Michael? Yeah, so uh, just this can be a little bit confusing. Um, basically, any program is either going to be called an atmospheric science program or be called a meteorology program. They are essentially the same thing. Um, there's no difference between whether your degree is in meteorology or atmospheric science. Um, so that's number one. Um, atmospheric science, I guess, technically incorporates the idea behind planetary atmospheres, but they're they're essentially the same thing. Um, but in terms of you know, the, the actual like you know, bread and butter meteorology, uh, a lot of people, when they think about the weather, they think about forecasting. And so um, some of the things I didn't really get to talk about is, uh, you know, we have our, we have our MET lab here where we have all our computers. And uh, uh, that's where a lot of, um, for example, I I'll teach a class in the spring that, that has a lab and we analyze lots of data and get all the training that, that meteorologists you know, need to do the day in and day out uh, forecasting of the weather if that's what if, if that's what they want to do. Um, so you know, the, the kind of, you know, what, what I focused on when I when I spoke was just whether you want to be a forecaster, what people traditionally think of as a meteorologist, uh, our program is 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 really uh, set up for that success. Or if you want to do um, you know, research or, or things that maybe most people don't think of when they think about meteorologists. Um, I, we also have that that set aside too. So um, yeah, our program is is definitely um, set up for um, any type of, of career that that you'd like to go to related to to the weather. Thank you. And I think we'll just have one more question because we are just at five o'clock. Um, but we had a, a question about getting involved in research as a freshman. Um, so we know it's possible, but what makes a student um, a good candidate who you know, would actually be ready or what type of entry level research is there? Um, and then we'll wrap it up and I will hopefully everyone had a great session. Um, I can quickly try to tackle that. Uh, I've had freshmen in my lab before doing research. Usually what happens is they're taking an introductory level class. Uh, they're, they're doing well in the class and they approach me about potential research opportunities. And if they're not a good fit for what's going on in my lab, I try to connect them with other faculty members that are more appropriate to what they're seeking to see if there might be opportunities there. I think that's probably the way it most often works.
anyone else wants to chime in with their thoughts, you're welcome to do so. Uh, I'll just chime in the, the student that I talked about who's looking at fin whale and um, humpback whale calls in my lab as a freshman. Um, he approached me uh, earlier in the semester with a lot of enthusiasm and um, had some experience with what we were going to do. So he's he's currently doing research with me. Thank you so much, everybody. I hope that you enjoyed today's presentation. Again, it will be available for you to uh, watch on the Stony Brook and possibly the SOMAS YouTube pages by the end of the week. Um, thank you to all of our presenters. You did an amazing job. This was incredible information and we really appreciate your time. I hope everybody has a safe and happy holiday season. Thank you so much, everyone. Good night. Good night, thank you.